Hey guys, what's up? Bambi TV. So today we're going to go to a new reaction, guys. Guys, we're going to be reacting to the prophet on Judgment Day. I am my first time checking this out, guys. I one of your recommendation, guys. This video is actually sponsored by Nutrick. They make this video possible. To ensure to check them out, guys. Their link is in my description below. Like, guys, Nutrick is an amazing clothing brand that comes with amazing quality and affordability. Like, you can get clothes. For cool discount price, guys. Use my promo code, you will get 15% off any clothes you order from their shop. Guys, let's get straight into this. The message for seven. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, On the day of judgment, you will reach a position of misery. People will be miserable. People will, some of them will be saddened. People would have given up hope in some ways. And then the Prophet ﷺ said the long hadith. The people will gather each other. And they will begin to question what's going to happen to us. And so they will remember the Prophets. Let's go to the Prophets. Let's ask them. Let's come to them and ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment, the hisab, the accountability. Prophet said, in this life I had a dua. And this dua, I kept it. Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me, was that, oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam. And they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar. You are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. Inni akhafu mithla alladhi takhafu. I fear the same thing you are fearing. Inni asaytu rabbi. I disobeyed my Lord once. Inna rabbi qad ghadiba ghadaban lam yaghdab mithlahu qad. Today, my Lord is in a state of anger, which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father of mankind. Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh alayhi salam will say the same thing. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me. Go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets. Till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day would also respond in the same way. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers, everyone. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got an answer to this. I've got something I have to answer to. The people took me as a God. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Lastu laha. Finally, we reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was like, I'm, like, let me say I'm enjoying it in a kind of way. Like, I love what he's saying. But to think of it, like, I was actually asking myself this question. What do Christians call Noah Abraham? I know we call Abraham the father of all nations, but what do we call Noah 
Like, what do we call the past prophets? Like, I don't think we call them prophets, though. Like, this question actually hits me right now. And him saying, Jesus is going to be saying, they were calling me God. But I feel if Jesus will say that, like, I feel he cursed it. You know, he, he once said, I am a father and one. And no one gets to my father except for me. And I believe if any Christian know, every, every Christian knows that, we believe that there is God, there's Jesus, and there's the Holy Spirit. We, we believe in that ranking. But me personally, guys, like, if I want to be honest, I feel we only have one God, and I feel Jesus is the Son of God. Well, he can be called a God, but he isn't the Almighty God, like, I believe mean, we have one God, and Jesus is the Son, and being that we need to pray through Him to get to God, and this is my belief, guys, and I haven't seen something that will make me change it yet. Guys, let's get back into this, though. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day, that I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my Ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their Imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. Yeah, it's just pardon me, but are you saying Muslims are followers of Muhammad? Well, I know Christians are followers of Christ, but are you trying to say Muslims are followers of Mohammed, like just please write it down in my comment section right now, please. I'm begging, please, like, because he said something like that. So let me know, guys. Like, this is an amazing question, but let me know. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, "Go to whoever you used to follow." Al Rasul Sallam says, "When the people come to me." And they say, please, Ishfa' lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin. I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, Ana laha. He says, Thumma asjudu li rabbi sajda. I prostrate to my Lord such a prostration, so prolonged. Only Allah knows how long, Masha Allah, an asjud, as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood. And I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life. I've never used these words in praising him and calling out to him in my sujood. And then my ummah who followed me, they will prostrate behind me. A caller will call out, prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. In Muslim, the Book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, My Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him, and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called as saq. The Muslims, the believers will see it, and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'idhnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, Fala yastati'oon. They will not be able to prostrate. And the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. As for the Prophet ﷺ and his ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, Fi Allah. On that day, Allah will descend. How will he descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. And Allah says in the Quran, on that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. Hmm. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. 
eight of them carrying Allah's throne. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the sky, the worldly sky, this universe that we see, compared to the second sky, because there are seven skies Allah created, is like a ring thrown into the desert. Okay, like, I do want to say this then. If, you know, it's, it's kind of weird, like, I am feeling goosebumps already. But it looks like things that happen in heaven kind of happen on earth. Because if you watch some movies and you read history, you see some kings, like you see, like, let me say, six gods carrying them in their shoulders. And if you read the Bible, see, it's, it's similar, like, to think of it. You go, well, I believe God said he created us in his own image and likeness. And I feel we are like God. Based on the image and likeness, there are some things God does not share. Him being forever wise, forever loving, those kinds of things. But like he created us in his own image and likeness. So like I feel we all of us, everyone on earth have some we have eyes, we have nose, we have ears, we have mouths. This kind of likeness, guy. So let's say, let me not drift from my point. Let's say we are, we have a body, we are one. But why do we call it the spirit, soul, and body? We have one body, but we call it the spirit, soul, and body. Please, guys, I need someone to give me a perfect, sorry, a perfect explanation for this. Why do we call it the spirit, soul, and body? Like, just the only conversation. I want to know. Like, I want to know. Guys, let's get back into this. And the second compared to the third is like a ring thrown into a desert. And the third compared to the th fourth is like a ring thrown into a desert. And so on, until you reach the seventh. And the seventh compared to the arsh, to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a drop in one hadith, like a drop in the ocean. And there is Allah's kursi, which is above the throne. And the kursi encompasses the whole skies and the earth. It's even larger than the arsh, than the throne. That will be brought on the day of judgment. And then Allah will say, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, irfa' ra'sak, lift your head and ask for anything I will give you then the Prophet Sallallahu lifts his head and the only thing he will say is Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati Oh my Lord save my nation save my nation the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu and he will know them and Rasul Sallallahu will know his Ummah which he interceded for how will he know them when the Prophet ﷺ was saying, I we are waiting for you at the Hawd, he said, follow my sunnah and stick to it. What I am on and my companions stick to it. And I will be waiting for you there. And I will call you and say, come and drink from the fountain. Sharbatan hani'atan mari'a la yadma'u ba'daha abada. Prophet ﷺ said, you will drink from it. A drink that you will never ever be thirsty after that again thirst as in the quenching of thirst which brings you to fatigue that's the thirst we're talking about you will never be thirsty like that ever again and you will enjoy it this fountain on the day of judgment he says it will be colored like milk you'll say this is like milk but it's not like the milk of this earth it will taste sweeter than honey but not like the honey of this earth and you will have cups of gold and silver some of the ummah of the Prophet we ask Allah to let us drink from that I mean, will drink by themselves. And some of them, the Prophet ﷺ will give them to drink from his blessed hand. Before the Prophet ﷺ died, he went to his final visit to the grave of the Shuhada, of the martyrs, and to Al Baqiyah. And he made dua for them, and then he said the following words The only thing I will miss of not seeing is that I will die not seeing my brethren. And then Abu Huray radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulallah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik. Are we not your brothers already? Look, we're here, you can see us. 
He said, Ya Abu Huraira, you are my companions. Yes, and you are my brothers. But the brethren I'm talking about, they, don't, they are not here. They are the ones who believed in me and followed me, but never saw me, never met me. We ask Allah that we are them. Ameen. He said, what will happen? He said, I'm going to meet them on the day of judgment and I will call them to drink from the fountain. He said, How will you know them and you have never seen them? He said, if I told you that a person had many horses and some of them were very black in color and among them there were horses that were striped with white on their faces and on their arms and on their legs and on their tails and he said well, isn't he able to tell the difference between these horses and those he said yes very easy he said on a day of judgment my ummah will come to me muhajjalin. they will come striped with noor brightness noor on their faces this is what it meant. It means on their faces and on their arms and on their legs. How did I know this? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ This is because the effect of the wudu they used to make. What does that mean? It means they used to pray. They used to prepare for prayer. They were purified by making wudu. إِسْبَاغِ الْوُضُوءِ He said, إِسْبَاغِ الْوُضُوءِ They used to not only make wudu, they used to make their wudu proper. So they would go a little bit beyond their knee, their elbows, a little bit beyond their ankles. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu said, after that day, everyone I saw, I used to say to them, whoever wants to drink from the fountain of the Prophet extend your wudu. Like make it better. Make it better. Or do it like the way Bilal radiallahu anhu used to make it. Before every prayer he used to make wudu, whether he still had it or didn't. There will be people whom the Prophet when he intercedes for them, they will be turned away from the fountain. See, there will be angels standing there and the people will rush to that fountain. They will see that this is salvation. So some of them will be prevented by the angels. And they will look like Prophet ﷺ will say, are they from my ummah? And some of them the Prophet ﷺ used to know from this life. And you'll say, they are from my ummah. And Allah will say to him, they changed after you. They changed after you. Meaning they changed your sunnah after you the innovators the ones who apostated they changed and the prophet ﷺ will say sorrowness and depth of hellfire for those who changed my sunnah after me those who changed my way after me my brothers and sisters this is when at this point this is when the sky above us will be filled with darkness we look up and what do we see? We see our books, our records. So, you, <sighs> are you kind of scary though? Not scary person, or like, I say truth reveals and and some stuff, guys. My honest opinion about Islam or Muslims, I feel Muslims are amazing people. It's just the ones that truly love the religion. That truly love. They are truly that they love giving and they're open minded. Not all sure. like I can say most of you are not open minded. I I can say like you guys say be open minded, please. When you're watching the video, be open minded. But when I make my point, like when I tell you as a Christian what I believe, what we Christians believe, you, you just don't listen to me, just want me to just follow you. I will I will call it blindly in a way, because like I feel for someone to follow you, you have to make sure the person is clarified though. You have to make sure like the person is doing something that he's supposed to do, not just follow you because you said this. Like it's supposed to give proof and help the person understand some certain things, you know. Like this was amazing though, guys. Please actually check out YouTube guys. They made this video possible. Like this video won't be here without them. 
So please guys, like, please, I'm begging you, check them out guys. I'll see you next time guys, please.